and good day everybody uh, welcome back to my channel I was just thinking to myself how I wanted to start this conversation and I think we'll just jump right into it so I wanted to create this video again for some of the security minded uh, folks out there who work in the enterprise or who work in uh, dynamic IP assignments and management of those networks there is uh, a number of utilities and you've probably seen them on my videos or I have a lot of them I've talked about this a lot and one of those is the ability to identify from a MAC address prefix what the vendor is so that we as engineers who look through logs on a daily basis who may run across a MAC address somewhere in your environment have some way of identifying what type of device that is because that then becomes critical in the foundation of your security if devices are getting onto your network that shouldn't be on your network or that pose security issues to you and that you need some way to identify them, not just individually, because most vendors have many, many different MAC addresses and think about every product as a MAC address and iterations or reversions of that. And they have to register basically through IANA. So what we've done, and to simplify this process, there's a file out there called OUI.txt. And in that process of the, or the file OUI.txt, it identifies um, all of the different vendors, their addresses, the hexadecimal and the base 16, which is what we're using here to identify uh, the MAC address registration, which is done through IANA for that company. And the full file intact includes uh, addresses, physical addresses and contacts and detail, uh, detail there. Uh, but what I'm just getting into is a MAC address. So to kind of jump right into this, what I have done in some of those previous videos, I've done just about every format possible, but I wanted to look for uh, a, a way that you could run through a simple script, you know, real simple query, give me either this MAC address and identify its vendor in singularity or in plural, give me all of the MAC prefixes that are identified by a vendor and then let me do something with it. Now, the technology that I'm talking about here is PowerShell, Windows PowerShell and creating the scripts and what I've got to do that. And I'm also including this in more of a module that I'm uh, designing right now for IP control APIs. And this will be a core uh, function within that module. And uh, this is a standalone, which is why I have get Mac vendor ST as my project name, so ST for standalone. So this is included with this uh, PowerShell UI program that I've written, which I'm gonna kind of show you here as a, and also make available through my GitHub. Uh, but the idea is that, you know, as again, as a vendor, that you need the ability, or as a client, you need the ability to query the logs, find the MAC vendor, maybe do this in uh, bulk, uh, potentially, like if you're doing an ARP dump, or if you're doing some type of sniffer dump and trace. And so I've done all types of things with this, and maybe I'll come back to some of those. But the simplified and simple process of this is, I wanted a, a simple way to do that. Uh, so what I, I had put in here, and what will be included in my original module is, uh, I want to do, say, a Mac search in 01020, and I can specify the full Mac. I can specify the OID type information like I have here. I can specify it with a dash or with colons or even dots. So however that uh, information is passed into it as a Mac string, I'm then going to use some regular expressions to parse that out to you know, get down into the OUI, which is the first six bytes of that Mac address. So there was just a Mac search, but what I really found to be the power of this was the vendor search. And I have a lot of customers who had asked me, um, I want a report of all my Apple devices in my database. And if you go out and look at Apple, and we could probably, well, there you go. There's about 790 something, maybe 800 uh, Mac addresses just for Apple. And if you were trying to do a search for that, it would be uh, pointless. It would take a very long time and have to be entirely automated. So a couple of things that, you know, from a technology standpoint and with say IP control, the product that I use, there's a couple of ways that I've interfaced with this that, you know, you can take this Mac data and create Mac address pools that if you wanted to identify, say a pool of addresses by their vendor and either set this up as a inclusion or exclusion pool. So you can say these are all of the the white listed uh, MAC address prefixes, and these are all the black listed MAC address prefixes. And so by taking that and inserting colons into the data, you know, we can basically create a very simple 
client class for DACP services that will enable you to check this detail every time a MAC address comes into your DACP server and then to either grant, deny, or supply a set of options even specifically that tell it maybe the lease length or something else. So from a technology standpoint is once you have this data, the idea is to get it out to some format that you can then use it in some way that's meaningful to you other than perhaps just a search. And so the module itself, uh, you'll have the ability to see the, the script and I've included that all here in my GitHub. I just need to make sure this is uh, everything okay with this today and try it out and then I should uh, open it up to the public. Again, just be kind because I do this as a hobby. I'm not a programmer by trade. And um, the other part of this is, is in the, the graphical front end. So I, I have created just a little PowerShell studio that takes advantage of my get Mac script and that has its own function in it. And so in here, what I wanted to do is say, if I do that same search by Apple, calling that same PowerShell function, it's gonna to return to me a list of all of these devices. Now, what I wanted to expose here basically is the ability that you can then say, well, I wanna select these and I wanna copy them and or I want to output this information in a certain format, All right? So that was the first thing. Or if I was just say, taking a look at all of the different OUIs, like leaving it at empty and clicking on the search button brings up all of the OUIs, all 27,000 at this point. And then you can kind of filter through this and, and navigate through it and see, you know, how many max there are or to filter down. Now I've uh, updated this, it's probably about the fifth iteration of this. So I went from you know close to 45 seconds to a minute in that search to in a real system, this is virtual and a real, just a, you know, a few seconds. So it's gotten much faster <laughs> in this search. A um, Couple things here though in this front end, this I thought was helpful and I've done with my other taps uh, apps is if I wanna filter on these, I have a one click filter. So by clicking on any of these fields, it'll filter out uh, that information, right? Uh, clicking on this will highlight everything so you can basically delete, or if you're pasting your MAC addresses, it'll then filter down. Um, I also made it so that any searches or clicks when you do the search or filter, will store it into the clipboard. So if you're looking for history, uh, this way, if you're doing copy and paste, it gives you a place to store it that you can then later come back in and copy uh, and do something with, okay? And then the MAC address search, again, this is that MAC address search, your vendor search. The OUI file itself, I do a check every time it starts up. And so the idea behind this file is it is continuously modified. Every day, new Mac vendors are added. We're at 27,939. Um, I don't think those are unique. I think maybe, maybe some duplicates, but what I'm loading in directly from the file. And I have an age check that I'm allowing that every time I run it, I don't wanna download the file. I don't wanna abuse their system that they're allowing us to use. So what I wanna do then is check every seven days. You know, I think that's fair to, to do, and I won't see something seven days old in my Mac list, at least I hope not. And so I check it, I give you some idea of what that expiration is and the number of OUIs. And you can go ahead and force a refresh, and I think this in the virtual system may take about 30 seconds. Uh, and the regular system takes five to 10, you know, depending on that you know, difference in the utilization. But that'll reload it, it'll reset the expiration time, and then every time I run a search or something, it's gonna look for that date, check it to see if it's expired. If it's not, it's just gonna continue on. Now, the output of this, I've added a couple options here. Um, the Excel, and I need to change this one here, but the Excel, if you have the import Excel module, you can then save anything that's in the vendor search out to an XLS, XLSX file. So this creates the worksheet. Uh, you can then open that up and, and view all of that output into the Excel. You can do the same thing with JSON if you want to, you know, set up a JSON structure, you know, and naming it that way for, for naming purposes. And um, other things, so XML and, and all the other formats. And so I thought, okay, that's pretty good. And um, I'll change this and update that image there. And then in the app settings just right now, I have it loading up the PowerShell version. So showing what your underlying version is. I'm running the desktop, but if you're running core or what have you in this PS version, okay? Now about, if you find out that this is useful for you, you know, feel free to take a snapshot and contribute, you know, help me out there. Anyway, so this is a, the product and um, I'm gonna, the saves here, we'll probably change around some of the menus here, but the save will probably be just for the clipboard uh, since we do have outputs for everything else, but uh, you know, a couple changes there. Okay, so um, you know, I hope this helps out. And, and again, for the security minded, when you, when you're thinking about MAC addresses, you're thinking about access to your DACP, 
uh, think about what you can do with that. And we've got different ways that we can import this directly into IP control if you're you know, a customer of ours and help you along the way. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line and uh, good luck. And I you know, hope you uh, find this useful and check the GitHub here in the next couple of days and I'll update the link when it's ready. Thanks. Take care.